So for your bell work for today, determine if it's a function, one-to-one, -one, or neither. So remember, for it to be a function, this means X cannot repeat. And for it to be one to one, X and Y can't repeat. All right. So first look at your X's. Let me see if I can write that a little neater for you guys, hold on. Okay, so first you're gonna look at your X's, <clears throat> then you're gonna check your Y's. Now, if your X repeats, it's automatically a neither. You don't have to keep looking. The answer is neither and you just move on. So for the first table, do we have a repeat in X? No, all right, do we have a repeat in Y? So that would be what? One to one. All right, what about our second one? Is that, do we have a repeat in X? What about in Y? So because we have this repeat here, what does that mean? What kind, what is this? It's just a function, good. It's not one to one, it's a function. All right, let's go to our notes. And we're just gonna go over the definition of linear functions. So go to your note packet and let's talk about A.2, which is linearity, intercepts, and symmetry. Today we're just gonna talk about linearity. And then we're going to go back and finish that handout we started yesterday. So on your test, which is September 1st, you're going to add, you're, you will be asked to determine when an equation is linear. So a linear function simply means that the graph is a straight line. So when we say is it linear, that means is the graph a straight line? Yes. So we're in our note packet. I believe we're on page four or five. Which, what, what page are we on? Four. Okay. So the graph is a straight line. So that's what linear means. So when we're looking at an equation, how do we know if it's linear? It's actually very, very simple. If you have no variables can be raised to a power other than one. So that's the really the main thing that you wanna underline in that paragraph. So we're going to look at a list of equations and we're going to determine if it's linear. And if you see an exponent or a power higher than one, it's not linear. And that's it. That is all that is to it. So what I, I think what I wanna say is graph is a straight line. That's what I'm trying to say. So when it's, when it's linear, your graph is going to be a straight line. So for example, this is linear because it's a straight line. This is not linear because it has a curve. This is a straight line. So that's when, when we say, is it linear? It's either a straight line or it's not a straight line. So we're just trying to figure out, is the graph, without taking the time to actually graph it, looking at the equation, we're trying to determine if it's linear. So let's look at these examples quickly and see which ones would be linear. 
So let's look at this first one. Let's look at the first box. Do you see any exponents higher than one? Yes. Exponents? No. So we don't have any exponents higher than one. Let me zoom in. The invisible exponent, when you don't see an exponent, it's one. So this is x to the first and that's y to the first. So this is linear. That is linear. So the graph of that equation is going to be a straight line. Now, what about the second box? Do you see any exponents other than one? Yes, this is an exponent. That's not one. So this is a nonlinear equation. Which again, all that means is when we graph it, it's not a straight line. <coughs> Let's look at this box here. Raise your hand if you say it's linear. Who says it's not linear? I agree. Because of this exponent. It's the exponents that we're looking at. So this is nonlinear. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at this one. Raise your hand if you say it's linear. Who says it's not linear? That would be linear because we have an exponent of one and one. When you don't see a number or an exponent, it's because it's one, this is linear. All right, what about this one? X equals five. Who says it's linear? Who says it's not? Do you see an exponent higher than one? Nope. When you don't see an exponent, that means the exponent is 1. So this is x to the first. So that is linear. This is actually what we call a vertical line. This is a vertical line. When this x equals. But it's still a straight line, so it is linear. All right, one fourth x plus two. Who says it's linear? Who says it's not? It's linear. I agree. All right, now pull out the handout from yesterday. There was just two questions we didn't get a chance to do, and it was called 8.1 practice. So I wanted to look at number five and six. So take a minute. I think the easiest question to answer is if it's a function or one-to-one. -one. Go ahead and answer that first. So yes or no, so take a minute, look at question number five. So this is from yesterday. It should say 8.1 practice. You weren't here yesterday? Yes. Anybody else absent yesterday? All right, so function. Do we have a repeat in X for number five? Yeah. Yes. So because that's, it failed the first test, it's an automatically a no for both. This is not a function. It is not one-to-one. -one. So now let's talk about domain. Your domain, when you have a table, we just list the numbers. 
So starting with the smallest number going to the greatest number. So my domain is just a list of numbers. And you don't have to write the same number twice. For my range, the smallest number is negative 7, then it's negative 6, negative 2, 4, and 5. And that would be your domain and your range. All right, take a minute and try to do number 6 by yourself. Looking at those order pairs. Tell me if it's a function or if it's one-to-one, -one, and then list the domain and range. Yes, Drew? Did you have a question? Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, like, uh, <coughs> oh, okay. Jaden, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I, I think I asked. You have your earbuds in? Is that what it is? Because I said it like three times. I said, who wasn't here yesterday? No, I was here. Oh, okay. It's over there in that folder, the Tuesday folder. Mm -hmm. uh, so the range is going to be uh, y values. Yep, range is your y values, domain is the x values. So let me write that too. Domain is x values, and range are your y values. That's a good question. So technically you should put them in order from the smallest number to the largest number. So for example, in number six, you should put them in order. You should figure out the smallest number and then go to the largest number. You're welcome. Good questions. So when you have an order pair, the first number is X, the second number is Y. So I'm gonna highlight all of our X values green. So this is all of my X values. And these are all of my Y values. So first you're gonna see, do you have any of the, are any of the numbers that I highlighted in green, are any of them the same? And then you're gonna look at all of the numbers that I highlighted in pink or red to see are any of those the same. So who thinks this is a function? Do we have any repeats in X? So for my X, I have negative seven, negative three, negative one, five, and seven. Are any of those numbers the same? No. So we absolutely know that this is a function. So we're gonna say yes. Yes for the function test. Now let's see if it's one to one. So my Y's, I have a negative six, a zero, a positive seven, a negative seven and a positive six. Are any of those numbers the same? So is it one to one? Yes. All right, good. So now we're gonna list our domain. We're gonna start with the smallest number. So it looks like they're already in order for our domain. So I'm just gonna list them. Negative six, negative three, negative one, five, and seven. And whenever it's a list, you kind of put these squiggly brackets. They just look like parentheses with a nose they should look like the profile of a face it's kind of weird to to draw but just do your best and then for the range my smallest number would be negative seven and then it's negative six zero six and seven and that would be your range
All right, I wanted to go over homework. Do we have any? Um, I wanted to look at homework one. So can you take out homework one? I wanted to go over some of these questions. You have a question about the example when you were on the phone? No. Oh, about homework. What's the question? All right, I want to do question one. I picked two. So I want to do one, and I think the other one that I picked was four. So let's look at question one. Which one of those would you do you want me to go over? The one to the left, the middle, or the right? Which one do you think is the hardest? Middle. Middle, anybody else think that's good? So remember for your domain, I will tell you that all of these graphs have two arrows going to the left and right. So all of these have a domain of all real numbers all real numbers and sometimes I'll just put a R N to abbreviate all real numbers you can also put negative infinity to infinity so you can say all real numbers by saying just writing out the words or you can put negative infinity to infinity the best way is negative infinity to infinity, but I'll take any of those. Whenever you have an arrow pointing down and up, your range is also all real numbers. So I'm gonna label these A, B, and C so we know which graph we're talking about. Which one of those graphs would also have, only one has a, has a range of all real numbers. So which graph would you say has a range of all real numbers? Has an arrow pointing down and an arrow pointing up? A. A is the only one that also has a range of all real numbers. So I'm going to write ARN. For graph B, the range, because you have arrows pointing down, that would be Y is less than and equal to. For graph C, you have two arrows pointing up, so that's Y is greater than and equal to. So for graph B, let me zoom in, the highest point is, my highest Y value is right here. And what does Y equal right here? Two, because this is zero, this is one, and this is two. So is Y is less than or equal to two? For your range, both arrows are pointing up, so that would be y is greater than or equal to. So if I zoom in on C, on this graph, this is my lowest point. What is y equal right here? Not x, but y. Zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. All right, now you're going to go ahead and answer if there are functions or one-to-one. -one. Go ahead and do that. Write yes or no for the function test and yes or no for the one-to-one -one test. All right, and the last one I wanted to talk about, and we'll be finished for today. Flip it over to the back. Let's look at question number four. So is this discrete, continuous, or neither for this first one? Discrete. Whenever you have points that are not connected, we call that discrete. Your domain is the same because we have three points and all three points are the same. They're all two. So your domain only has one number. And that's a two. That's, the, that's your range. Your Y values, you have three. What's the lowest Y value? Negative three, and then after negative three, 
and after negative one, four. And that's it. Yes. It is not, I would not mark it wrong. I might take off a half a point. I wouldn't mark it wrong. So you do want to put them in order from least to greatest. Looking at the, not the second one, because I think that one should be pretty easy because we just did one like that on number one. I want to look at the last one that's just a vertical line. So is that discrete, continuous, or neither? What would you say? It's continuous because it's a straight line. There's no breaks in it. Well, it doesn't matter that it's a straight line. I'll take that back. That has nothing to do with whether it's discrete or continuous, but it's a unbroken curve or an unbroken line, which means this one is continuous. Now, this is a vertical line. So X is only this number. And what does X equal right here? Let me zoom in really closely. Yep, X is only this number here. And right here, because this is zero, this is negative one and this is negative two. So your domain would be negative two. And because you have an arrow pointing up and down, what do you think your range is going to be? Whenever you see an arrow pointing up and down, the range is all real numbers. Okay, I am checking homework one tomorrow. It's so important that you do not lose that purple sheet of paper because I'm collecting that purple sheet of paper on test day and that's all your points. So if you lose it, then you have wiped out all of your points, okay? So I'm going to come around tomorrow during bell work and I'm going to check off homework one that it is completed. Now, I, you can get full credit for homework one on Thursday, Friday. After Friday, I'm posting the answer key. So it drops down to 35 out of 50. Any questions about homework? All right. Thank you so much. Okay.